So Dr. Sheree, a proven visionary, author, and highly sought after physician leader. She is an occupational and environmental medicine physician, public health expert, and a breast cancer survivor. As a professional speaker, she has earned the prestigious de designation as a certified speaking professional from the National Speakers Association. After breast cancer treatment, Dr. Sheree developed lymphedema in her right upper extremity, stopped practicing as a physician, reinvented herself, and went on to become a national public figure, professional speaker, and owner of her own healthcare consulting business. As the former national spokesperson and the former national African-American health equity ambassador for Susan G. Komen, she is no stranger to media, be it TV, radio, print, or internet. She recently launched her new show, The Live Today Show, on Can TV Channel 21. The show is designed to increase exposure to her 501c3 nonprofit organization, the Live Foundation, Live Today Foundation, and provides valuable education and resources to individuals living with lymphedema. It was her experience with cancer that impassioned her with an empathic fervor and embodies everything that she does. She brings a unique perspective as a physician and a patient, a survivor and an overcomer, and a daughter turned caregiver. She dedicated her life to encouraging others to live life to its fullest. And for that acronym, L-I-V-E, what that means, L, love myself and others. I, inspire those around me. V, voice my dreams and ambitions. And E, enjoy life. She lives every day, and as a result, she will leave behind a legacy that will hopefully allow others to journey along a path that is not so harsh, not so lonely, and not nearly as painful. It has been her holistic approach to life that envelops her interactions with those to whom she ministers, counsels, consoles, and comforts. The tens of thousands of lives she has affected, changed, encouraged, inspired, and touched are part of her current legacy of changing the lives of others including their future generations. We are so honored to have Dr. Shree here today and I am gonna let her take it away. Wow, um, at first I had, it, it sounded like me and then the more you kept going on, I figured, my goodness, I've been busy. <laughs> but I'm blessed because I am here today and in the land of the living and I'm telling you 14 years ago, I was not so certain to, certain of that. I'm so grateful that each of you have decided to, to turn in, tune in today and take a listen at what I have to offer and what I have to say, because this community is certainly not a community any of us wanted to be a part of, but nonetheless, we are. And so therefore it is pertinent, is prudent for us to gather as much information as we possibly can, share our resources, encourage one another. Um, and sometimes it's just good to know that I'm just not out there by myself and on my own, because although we may know other, for me, other cancer patients and other survivors, I'm not necessarily in contact with someone else that's living with lymphedema. And so it's important to understand uh, your, your stance in life when you realize and take into account that people are watching what you do. Sometimes people have the strength or gain the strength to face their challenges simply by watching you. And so I'm grateful that each of you are here and I am grateful for the opportunity to be able to share my story uh, and share some information about the uh, foundation that I created and what we can do to help and partner with one another. So a little bit about me and my story. Um, I was a practicing physician. I wanted to be a doctor ever since I was two years old. I could not envision being anything else, but uh, apparently, I had this uh, revelation while watching Marcus Welby. <laughs> you remember those program, that program way back when with my, when my with my parents, and I would always climb in bed with them when it came on and watch it. And one time, I apparently stood up and proclaimed, "I know what I want to be when I grow up." And my parents are like, "Well, you know, what do you want to be?" And then I said, "A doctor." <laughs> and so my dad said, "Well, why do you want to be a doctor?" And you know, I I apparently thought about it for a second and then I said because I want to help people and then of course you know my parents were like oh it's so beautiful and then I came back with and I want to make a lot of money at two so anyway the first goal was achieved <laughs> that second goal not so much but I was grateful for an opportunity to serve as a practicing physician 
for 16 years. I mean, impacting thousands of lives through my patients and my patients' families. But October 1st, 2008, I found a lump in my right breast and it happened to be cancer. Uh, I underwent a partial mastectomy where they removed half of my right breast. I underwent a level one lymph node dissection in which they removed 16 lymph nodes, three of which were positive for cancer, 15 rounds of chemotherapy and 33 treatments of radiation. I had started wearing wigs before I even started chemo. So most people in my life didn't have a clue, had no idea what was going on in my life because I changed wigs like I changed clothes. So they didn't pick up on anything. And the handful of people that did know what was going on didn't really know what to do or say about it, but that was okay because I was going to move on with my life. I was going to share my story on an as-needed basis, share my victory. I'm a survivor. I made it through and just put it all behind me. But in the summer of 2010, uh, a life-changing event occurred. Um, lymphedema set in and it set in for real. I had noticed that probably within about 10 days after completing radiation, I had some swelling in, in my arm, my right arm. And so I went into physical therapy. I had some cording that was going on in my, uh, under my armpit. So they took care of the cording, the swelling went down and I seemed to be okay. They just told me to wear some, you know, ready to wear garments, buy them from your local medical supply store, uh, wear them when you're traveling uh, or if you're exercising and you should be okay. Well, then unfortunately, less than 10 months after that, uh, lymphedema set in for real. Uh, and, and those of you that may or may not know, you know by now, you know, lymphedema, secondary lymphedema develops in stages. And so by the time you see the swelling, you're already at a stage two or beyond. And so mine was stage two and it, it required me to undergo four months, 16 weeks, Monday through Friday of physical therapy with the taping and a banding and uh, all of that uh, for 16 weeks before I was finally relegated to wearing compression garments 24 seven as my only treatment option. But to, to add insult to injury, uh, my boss at the time, who was not a physician, pulled me into his office and he said, Cherie, a physician who is not clinically capable is of no value to me. Now, after 16 years of practicing medicine, of wanting to be a physician ever since I was two years old, to be told now at the age of 42, after all of the loss, the loss of half my breast, the loss of my hair, my mom died while I was going through chemo, I separated from uh, my husband <laughs> and got divorced, all of, all of that, all of that loss in that short period of time, and now to be told I had no value. Um, and so while I was out on those 16 weeks of physical therapy, I was terminated from an executive management position from an organization that I thought that I would one day retire. And so now after these 16 weeks, wearing compression garments, being disabled from clinical practice, I, I, I lost it. I mean, I, I will admit I went through serious depression, had a lot of questions. You know, when I went to my radiation oncologist, that was when I heard about lymphedema for the first time. Now granted as a physician, I learned about it, but although I may have rendered the diagnosis of cancer to a patient throughout my years of practice, I never had to speak to them about lymphedema because I, the oncology was not my field of practice. And so although I knew of it, I was in patient mode. I wasn't thinking about it. And to have your radiation oncologist to tell you, well, one to 2% may develop it. And then poof, you notice that within a few days after even finishing radiation therapy, oh, I'm noticing some swelling. Then 10 months later, it's full-blown lymphedema had a lot of questions. I, I had a, a lot of doubts. I, I, I was angry um, and, and depressed. And then I realized, wow, so I managed to get through the treatment and fight the battle and win the battle against breast cancer. And now I am faced with a disease that I'm now told and have to face the, the harsh reality that I will have to live with for the rest of my life. And not only is it a disease that I will have for the rest of my life, it is, it is a condition that must be treated. 
because not treating it appropriately leads me to risk of cellulitis and infection and then infection become can spread throughout the entire body. I can become septic. People have died. Then when I realized that I needed to get treatment, oh my gosh, okay, well, that's what I have insurance for, right? So then, no, now I apply for the compression garments that my doctor and my lymphedema trained physical therapist tells me that I need. And now they're not covered by insurance. And so now I realize that, wow. So now you can fight and win the battle of one disease and now have to be in a position where you're now living with a second disease that you will never be considered cured of. And so in my, in my travels with Susan G. Coleman as their national spokesperson, that was the opportunity where I came across tens of thousands of men and women and had the opportunity to educate them about their breast health and how they could join in the fight to end breast cancer. But what I also noticed was that there were so many women predominantly, I, didn't, I actually did not come across one male that had lymphedema, all were women. And many of them fell into one of three categories. Either they weren't wearing compression garments at all. They, they just weren't. And they weren't wearing them because they either couldn't afford them, two, weren't really ever told that they were that important. And they were told that they weren't important because they were simply told, oh, that's just some swelling. Thank God you're alive. Um, so, so they either couldn't, didn't understand what their diagnosis was. Um, they couldn't afford the garments or three, they were embarrassed by the garments that they had. And so it would be 94 degrees and we're walking 20 miles a day, you know, uh, and total of 60 miles over the course of three days. And women are wearing the compression garments and long sleeve t-shirts to cover their compression garments. And my heart went out because at least I was in a position where when I had to get my compression garments and mine had to be custom, I was able to afford it. But I realized in my travels that there were too many women out here who were struggling, who, whose husbands left while they were going through treatment and their husbands had the medical insurance. So now they ended up having to get all of their treatment via Medicaid. And then now when it came to dealing with lymphedema, uh, they were just kind of left out in the cold. And so I saw that there was a need uh, to, to be of some form of a financial assistance. But then I also saw the need of one, educating physicians and other healthcare practitioners on how to properly diagnose lymphedema and making them aware of the psychosocial impacts of lymphedema. I mean, it, it, studies have, have, have always shown that, that women who, um, who develop lymphedema uh, after breast cancer versus women who do not develop lymphedema, the ones that do, they have higher levels of psychological, social, sexual, and functional morbidity. And many of us are, are uh, burdened down with swelling of a limb to the degree that if you have to wear compression garments, you can't perform the essential functions of your jobs and then are summarily dismissed. So now not only are you unemployed, but you're unemployed having to purchase at least two sets of garments every year, uh, not covered by insurance. And if you're unemployed, you don't even have insurance. But then let's not forget about the new clothes you have to buy because now some of the sleeves on your blouses and shirts don't fit because one arm is bigger than the other uh, or one leg is, is larger than the other. Uh, so you have to buy more clothes. Sometimes you may have to hire help to do the things that you used to could do, but now you no longer can do. And so with all of these financial burdens and seeing so many women walk around not knowing what their diagnosis was, and again, those that were diagnosed and they said it's lymphedema, yeah, my doctor told me it's lymphedema, you know, it's some swelling, it can happen after your treatment, but then that was it. And I'm like, but your doctor didn't talk about treatment, compression garments, physical therapy on a regular. And you'll be surprised. You may think that it's commonplace, but in some areas, in rural areas, in areas where there are high, larger numbers of minorities, 
a lot of things just do not get said. And so seeing what was missing, I decided to form my own nonprofit, the Live Today Foundation. And that foundation, three primary goals. One, educate physicians and other healthcare practitioners on how to properly diagnose lymphedema and make them aware of the psychosocial impacts of lymphedema on a survivor's life or on a lymphedema patient's life. Number two, educate patients about what their disease is, about the importance of treatment. And for newly diagnosed cancer patients, I now have the wonderful opportunity to talk about lymphedema prevention. And then number three, we provide free compression garments to under-resourced cancer patients and survivors living with lymphedema. And so obviously being on this call, being a part of this group, if you've already, if you already see swelling, uh, you, you know either you have secondary lymphedema as a result of treatment of some other form of disease, and it doesn't have to be breast cancer, it could be some other form of cancer or from a, some other um, diagnoses, um, or maybe you have primary um, lymphedema, but you know that your mainstay of treatment is going to be compression garments, MLD, maybe pneumatic devices. And so my organization steps out and does tries to provide something uh, a little bit further um, with regards to financial assistance. And I want to share my screen with you because there are some additional resources that are out there that I want to share with you. So let me start here. First of all, Live Today, our website, www live-today.org. I'm going to take you out to the website and show you some things there, but I also want you to be able to jot down the email address. That's info at live-today.org. That's important because if you know of a cancer patient and or survivor that is living with lymphedema and they are facing financial difficulties, have them shoot us an email, let us know that they are in need of compression garments, and I will make sure uh, that we get a very, it's a very simple application out to them. It's just name, diagnoses, when did you notice the swelling, just for us to be able to monitor and maintain some metrics. Um, and then I send them, or, or someone on my team sends them um, their choice. We use Medi, Joe, uh, Juzo, uh, and Lymphedivas uh, as options. And then based upon their sizing, based upon what they need, they are able to pick out their designs, their color choices after telling us what their sizes are, and then the garments get shipped directly to them. So, and if you're old school, you want to give us a call, you can call us at 754-220-0234. Now, I want to also let you know that we're out there on social media. So if you're on social media, if you're on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, Follow us at livetoday.org, that's livetoday, D-O-T-O-R-G, and then go out on YouTube, look us up, the Live Today Foundation or Live Today Foundation, and find all of the uh, TV shows uh, that we have done with the Live Today show. All of the episodes are out there on YouTube, extra uh, training resources such as this one will be out there on YouTube, so make sure you go out there and look us up. But I want to talk with you today uh, as far as providing some additional financial support. So with my organization, again, right now, we're currently only able to help cancer patients and survivors living with lymphedema. And I mean, yes, living with lymphedema, and it does not have to be breast cancer in particular. I was, I'm a breast cancer survivor, but uh, initially when I started it, that was my mindset, breast cancer patients. But again, we started back in 2017 and over the course of these five years, if I had limited to just breast cancer, um, I would have been missing out on so many other patients. Uh, so now we have men and women in all forms of cancer, but it does have to be secondary lymphedema related to cancer at this time. So what I did was I tried to find some additional resources out there, national resources, because I understand that you guys may come from different parts of the country. Um, and so if you search for lymphedema financial assistance, 
um, and maybe you put in regional or in your area, you may find some other programs specific and more geared towards your locale. But what I'm offering you tonight is, is a, our national-based programs. So regardless of where you are, you can reach out to them. So the first is the Core Compassion Project Lymphedema, Lymphedema Sleeve Program. This provides lymphedema arm sleeves to individuals diagnosed with breast cancer. And what I like about them, if you go out, just click on their link. I just want to let you see, they have a beautiful uh, website. And here's where it's so easy. Complete the application. You can complete right here. They partner with Lymphedivas, just as we do. Lymphedivas has an excellent, very snazzy uh, uh, choice of sleeves, uh, gauntlets, as well as gloves. So go out to their website, but you can see uh, they have various different services. They also, you can find out about their affiliates and you have a way of getting to get involved. But if, if you're particularly interested in finding another uh, nonprofit that works with lymphedivas, because you've seen someone in one of their sleeves and you want their sleeves, this um, is a, is a, a group that you can go with. So now, the I wanna go to the Noble Heart Fund. Now with the Noble Heart Fund, they provide, uh, and give me the thumbs up if you see Noble Heart Fund on the screen. Thumbs up. Do you see Noble Heart on the screen? Okay, perfect. We, we can see your slides, Dr. Cherie. We can't see your screen if you're showing us a website or something like that. We can't see that. We just see your slides. Okay, gotcha. So I clicked, oh, I needed to go back and go back to that screen. Okay, I'll know that from now on. So this one with the, and I'm wondering if I should, well, let me just keep going. The Noble Heart Fund, they provide lymphedema patients with nighttime compression sleeves for free or at a discounted price. Again, I'm going to make sure that Angela has all this information um, and you'll have a copy of these slides because you can either call them, you'll have their fax number, here's the, their website. They do not have an email contact um, as the core compression program did. But this is great because you can go to core compression and get a daytime set of sleeves. And then you can come over to the Noble Heart Fund and get a set of uh, nighttime compression. I like to call my nighttime compression garment my oven mitt, because uh, it looks like an oven mitt just all the way up my arm. So if you need an oven mitt, make sure you reach out to the Noble Heart Fund. The next source is the Reed Sleeve people. Now they provide lymphedema alert bands. So, you know, a lot of times when you want to make sure you're going to the hospital, you want to let somebody know, okay, mm -mm, don't use my right arm, don't use my left arm. Well, they actually provide you with a free lymph band, uh, uh, a free armband that uh, you can wear and keep on you just in case of an emergency. What if you have a syncopal episode, you pass out, you're in an accident, and you're not alert um, to speak up about your lymphedema? And certainly I can tell you. I have worked a number of traumas and been in the emergency room to know that when patients come in, <laughs> that we're, we're checking your arm for, you know, access to veins, we may or may not pick up whether or not it's lymphedema because we're just trying to do what we need to do for the patient. So having that arm uh, band on may be a very good thing. Um, the next program is the lymphedema, uh, the National Lymphedema Network. Now they've created a new garment program and I'm calling it new because initially um, you could, there was a way to go directly to NLN for a set of compression garments. Now the program is offered through therapists. So, so therapists or an organization that's part of the NLN network uh, they they agreed to be an associate of the NLN for an annual fee. And that gives them the opportunity to request five sets of compression garments per year. And so now therapists, when they apply, most likely have to create some form of a lottery or some kind of way because they only have five requests that they can make in that year's time. 
um, but it's good because who knows uh, if your therapist or your organization happens to be a part of the uh, National Lymphatic Network garment program um, and you come in and you need a set of garments, then you could very well be in a position through, again, however they choose to source the patients uh, for how they are selected, who gets the garments, you could be one of them. So NLN is another way to go as well. Now, as far as the national programs, that pretty much um, was it. But I also wanted to share with you, let me share website. Because this is what I was trying to show you before. And you can see the website now. Here on this website, this was the from the core lymphedema uh, core compression project. And this website, that was the first resource that I gave you. Again, here is directly their lymphedema sleeves program. You can download a medical form. You can complete the application right online. And the great thing about it is that they do partner with lymphedivas. So if lymphedivas is um, a garment manufacturer that you really enjoy their selection of arm sleeves, gauntlets, and gloves, then reach out and probably start with the core compression project because you pretty much kind of guarantee that you'll get the manufacturer of your choice. So this is my website. Um, this is my very large face. I have plenty of videos out here. Here is very simple. You can take your time, look through our legacy, find out more information about me. Uh, but I love on our survivors page. Uh, here on the survivors page is where I do an intro video, but right here in this section is where you'll find newly released uh, Live Today shows. Uh, so you can always go right out here to the website and take a look at that. Again, our shows provide a number of uh, resources. We sometimes highlight a Live Today recipient um, and sharing, hearing their powerful stories is just a way to shake you to your core, to remind you of just how blessed we are. Um, and then we also have other therapists like Angela. Um, we have individuals that are talking about yoga, diet, and, and these are not necessarily specifically cancer-related lymphedema. When they're talking, they're talking about lymphedema, period, regardless of the source. One specific piece of information I want you to take, at, take a look at, uh, well, two, I'm sorry, my patient education and resource page, all of this information about the lymphatic system, what causes lymphedema, signs and symptoms, your stages, going through prevention and reducing your risk to lymphedema treatment, lymphedema management, and we have some additional uh, patient brochures uh, and links that you can go out to here. Uh, Balance with Babs, again, when I was talking about yoga resources. So it's tons of information out here. Um, that was excellent in guiding us towards resources that were available um, for those who uh, need more financial resources for compression garments. And one thing I want to bring up that's right along those lines is the um, Lymphedema Treatment Act. Currently, Medicare does not cover compression garments flat out. They do not. And then we know that private insurance companies like to follow suit with whatever Medicare decides. And so the um, Lymphedema Treatment Act, which I'll put the link um, on in the chat section, it is, we've been trying to get these particular um, laws passed um, to actually uh, ensure that Medicare has to cover compression garments as a treatment for lymphedema. Um, and so for several years now, um, the Lymphedema Treatment Act organization has been um, reaching out to people on their website. They actually have written out letters that you can just cut paste and send to your local representatives um, to try to get this act passed to ensure that everyone who needs a compression garment that it will be covered in the very least partially um, in the future. So I'm gonna put that in the comment section as well if you guys wanna check that out and just be an advocate um, to try to help us with, with that measure as well.